Elon Musk recently tweeted this, outlining the possibility of a Starship launch in under two months. But is that realistic, or is it just one of the many overly ambitious timelines of the program? Today we want to find that out. Tests are the obvious thing that needs to happen before the orbital flight. NASA outlined the remaining tests SpaceX has to do with the B7 Ship 24 stack in a document provided in October 2022. With the recent restack, we are now looking at four more milestones remaining for the orbital launch, of which three are hardware tests. More on the regulatory side later. According to the NASA HLS document, the static fire test of all 33 Raptor engines will happen in a D-stack configuration. That is different from the arrangement we have right now. That leaves additional single species prop system testing and a wet rest rehearsal. In case you don't know, a wet rest rehearsal is practicing a rocket countdown, including loading the vehicle and powering it, without running the engines. So like learning to swim before you go into the ocean. In late October and early November, we saw a few tanking tests on the vehicle. These only utilized one of the tanks at a time and were most likely the single species prop system tests the NASA document talks about. They now moved into a series of tests again, where they fill both of the tanks up at the same time. These most likely preclude a full WDR. The question is now how many of these tests will be performed before they move into the full test. What we could see is a series of minor tests resulting in a WDR in short succession. The test could be achieved in a matter of days, depending on how smoothly they go. Compared to the static fire test, the chances of an anomaly are always lower if you are not igniting your engine. However, as we saw in the past, the chances are never zero. They may need several attempts of a WDR though. As we saw with the Artemis 1 SLS rocket, performing such a test can be challenging, as it puts not only the rocket, but also the ground service equipment through its paces. And things might break, especially with such big rockets like SLS or Starship. Pay special attention to the ground service equipment during these tests, as it never had to work this hard before. All the new pumps, tanks and lines need to perform to expectations to fill up Starship and Super Heavy with the demanded commodities. Stage 0 is essential as Stage 1 and Stage 2 for the orbital launch. Next up, D-Stack and Static Fire campaign. We know they can D-Stack pretty fast, so that should be fine with the goal of flying in two months. The Static Fire campaign that follows after that can be a whole nother beast though. The document speaks about additional de-stacked static fire tests. Since this release, B7 has performed multiple static fires, so we don't know how many more tests are on the path to 33. Given that the biggest test so far was 14, I think it's okay to assume that there might be more incremental steps on the path before we see the big test. However, you never know with SpaceX, they might decide to accelerate the timeline. Let us know in the comments what do you think about the path to 33 engines. In a recent answer to NASA Spaceflight on Twitter, Elon Musk confirmed that the presented theory we showed you here is a good theory, which might indicate it is very close to the final test configuration. SpaceX acknowledged that this is now the final test push ahead of the orbital launch campaign. This is not really news, but still great to see it being acknowledged on the main account of the company. Of course, this test also confronts the program with some chance of a mishap. We are talking about firing the most powerful rocket booster of all time on a brand new pad infrastructure. Things might break. Or you could even say, things will break. The question is just, what breaks and how badly? Some damage on the mount and the booster might be repairable and not really delay them as much. A pad explosion would set them back multiple months. The static fire campaign might take a few weeks as well. But if things go smoothly, and let's be honest, the last few tests in Boca went very smoothly, then it might not close the door for an early March launch. It has the most significant possibility to be the decider point in this timeline to reach orbital attempts in two months. Side note on the ship side at this point. 
SpaceX removed the stiffener rings from the air vacs below Ship 24. These give stability to the vacuum-optimized Raptor engines if fired at sea level. This means that with them removed, another static fire of Ship 24 is doubtful. But that does not mean there is not much to do with the ship anymore. The good part about the remaining work on Ship 24 is the fact that its SpaceX can perform it while they are working on B7 as well. So it should not be a pacing item. But for the complete overview, they need to finish the TPS tiles and remove the crane attachment points at the top of the ship so the full shield can be installed and protect the vehicle during re-entry. After all of this, a final restack would be on the agenda. You might call it the orbital restack. This stack would then be fully tested, integrated and ready for orbit. There might be some more flap or grid fin tests, maybe another WDR. We are still determining what SpaceX would do with such a full stack before launch. But the goal would be very visible from here and launch attempts might come soon. Attempts is the keyword here though. Getting 33 engines lit and performing a flawless launch might take them several times where they get all the way to T0 before a Raptor board makes them recycle again. So I guess it's time to prepare for some long NASA spaceflight streams. And if you want to stay comfy and warm during these long Starship streams, make sure to check out shop.nasaspaceflight.com for our destination known Starship hoodie. I'm actually wearing that hoodie right now. And if you click the link in the description below, you will get 10% off this hoodie for the first 7 days after this video releases. Back to Starship. On the regulatory side, the most significant thing missing, or actually the only thing missing, is the FAA launch license. Since there has been a lot of confusion about this, let me clear things up. The report we discussed a lot last year was the environmental assessment. The report focused on the launch and build process environmental aspects and gave SpaceX a list of mitigations they have to perform to offset and minimize the damage to wildlife and nature. The launch license, the one still missing, would give them the final go to launch. A launch license like this is mandatory for every rocket launch in the United States and they also acquire it for things such as Falcon 9. The question is how far SpaceX is in the necessary steps to obtain the final go, such as the mitigations from the EA. In contrast to the environmental assessment, the progress here can sadly not be monitored on a public web page. So we are kinda blind how close we are in this dropping. In earlier hops, Elon would start to tweet about it once it became an issue for the campaign. Since that has yet to happen, it might not be the roadblock yet. But it sure is a thing to monitor in preparation for flight, as it is necessary before launching. A bit of a speculation warning here, but the FAA could also demand software or hardware test results from the wet dress rehearsal or static fire. Any test concerning the flight termination system might convince them that this is a safe launch. Remember, Starbase is close to South Padre Island. Actually very close. So you want to ensure that you can permanently terminate the flight for safety reasons should things go wrong. Once this FAA launch license drops, it would clear the regulatory path for Starship to launch from Starbase. So where does all of this puts us? Well, a flight in early March is actually possible? Based on the remaining tests? It depends on many factors, dictated a lot by the success and the failure of the remaining difficulties. It is challenging because some of the most demanding tests conducted so far in Starbase are actually on the road ahead. If all of these perform up to expectations, Elon time might be real time for once. And should something go badly wrong, Booster 9 and several ships are right behind the current orbital stack to try to go to orbit later this year. If you like these programmatic overviews, let us know into the comments. Also feel free to add your opinions there as well. We might respond to them in a later video so we can have a chat about what you think about Starship Orbital. Thanks for watching and see you later.